Welcome to the first Dragon Podcast. And this Dragon Podcast is basically just going to be that same image that you see there. So if you like to listen to podcasts while you're doing your chores, or while you're just doing something menial or boring or even driving, go ahead and give this a listen. We're going to talk about the topic, Is Goku a Bad Father? Now, you basically have two extremes on this topic. On the one hand, you have people like Geekdom 101 and other YouTubers, or I like to call them Dragon Tubers, who like to say that Goku's a good father, he was there for his son, he died for his son twice, etc. And those people will swear up and down that Goku's a good father. And then on the other extreme, you have Team Four Star, who basically makes Goku to be a complete idiot, a complete tool, and a terrible father. They give him no mercy, cut him no slack, they even go so far as to make jokes like Piccolo is Gohan's real dad and things like that. And I am going to answer this topic once and for all. This will be the be all end all. You will not need a further discussion on whether or not Goku is a good or bad father after this. So here it is in no uncertain terms. Is Goku a good or a bad father? The answer, it depends. It depends on how you're measuring Goku. Because asking is Goku a good or a bad father is just like asking is Krillin strong. Now if you're comparing Krillin to Saiyans and Namekians, then no, Krillin's low to your trash. But if you're comparing Krillin to his fellow human beings, then he is S tier. I mean, think about this. Hercule is the world champion as far as regular humans are concerned, yet Krillin could one-shot Hercule. Krillin, before Dragon Ball Super, we all knew Krillin could one-shot Roshi. I would argue that in two of the three main continuities, Krillin's stronger than Roshi. In GT, he's stronger than Roshi. In Z, he's stronger than Roshi. Only in Super do we see Roshi pull out this kind of Ultra Instinct kind of trick, and yeah, I don't know if Krillin can beat him anymore. But in general, if you compare Krillin to his other humans, his fellow humans, he's totally S tier. But if you compare him to Saiyans, he's F tier. Likewise, if you compare Goku's fathering skills to other Saiyans, then he's actually a decent dad. But if you compare Goku's fathering skills to human beings, then yes, he's an F tier dad, even worse than how Team Four Star portrays him. So we're gonna kinda dig into that here right now. Let's talk about the side that likes to defend Goku. Let's talk about all the so-called pros, the things that are in Goku's corner that make him seem like a great dad. For starters, he trained with Gohan in the Cell Saga, in the three years leading up to the Android Saga, and he was very active in Gohan's life before he died to Raditz. Speaking of Raditz, people point to the fact that he died in the fight against Raditz in order to try to save Gohan, and that he died in the fight against Cell in order to save Gohan, and what I would argue is probably the most reasonable argument that someone can give for why Goku's a good father is the fact that in the Bojack movie, he broke the laws of time and space and traveled across dimensions just to save Gohan. He said, my son needs my help, teleported back from the dead for a split second, punched the mess out of Bojack, then went back to being dead. That's an incredible father who loves his son beyond the grave. So these are all things that are in Goku's favor. Now, one last thing I'd like to point out is the fact that Goku tried to inspire Gohan in different areas of his life. Remember before Mystic Gohan went to fight Boo, Goku gave him a hug and said, go show him what a Saiyan's made out of? That's actually pretty good fathering right there. So these are all the pros. These are all the things that are in Goku's corner that actually portray him as a good father. Now, we need to talk about Saiyans in general. Saiyans on the whole are pretty bad fathers. Saiyans are such bad fathers that they make the dads from the Mari Povich show look like very involved dads. Think about what Saiyans do. They literally take babies, send them in space pods, to go commit war and genocide. Imagine if human beings did that, how immoral it would be. The closest thing we have to that in normal, everyday human existence would be like child soldiers in East Africa or in the Middle East where you have like seven-year-olds with AK-47s and things like that. That is the closest equivalent that humans in the real world have 
to how fathers are in Dragon Ball, how Saiyan fathers are in the Dragon Ball universe. They literally take a baby, measure the baby's power level, and then send the baby in a space pod to go kill some other creatures. So, these fathers aren't terribly involved in their children's lives on planet Vegeta. So the fact that Goku was even in Gohan's life to begin with means that Goku was a far better father than most other Saiyans. Even if you look at the kind of father that King Vegeta was, King Vegeta was also in Vegeta's life, but he left him with severe psychological scars. I mean, look how Vegeta turned out crying after getting beat to death against Frieza and talking about how bad his childhood was. Why didn't King Vegeta give his last breath to protect Vegeta from being a slave? But here, you have Goku giving his last breath to protect Gohan from being blown up by Cell. So these are all the reasons why someone could argue that Goku's a great father. But now we must look on the other side of things. We must look at all of the reasons why Goku could be portrayed, could be seen as a terrible father. Now, at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you where I personally stand, but let's now look at it. Let's look at some of these pretty incriminating things. For starters, Goku did not immediately come back to Earth after the fight with Frieza. Even after he learned instant transmission, he still did not come back to Earth on time. That's a strike against him. He never taught Gohan the Spirit Bomb or the Kaioken, two things which would have been very useful throughout his life. That's a strike against him. But what I consider to be the biggest strike against Goku as a father is the fact that after the Cell saw that, he chose to stay dead. Literally choosing to abandon his adolescent son. Now, those of you out here who are men, we all know that being a teenager, going through puberty, all those different questions and all those different things that go through your mind, that can be a challenging time in life. And it's very good to have a father that can guide you through those things. And where was Goku? Dead by choice. He had the chance to come back and be in his son's life, and he chose not to. B-I-T-C-H move, Goku. B-I-T-C-H move. But it gets worse. Because I'm about to undercut 90% of the reasons why people say Goku is a good father. Most of the people who defend Goku as a father talk about him dying against Raditz and dying against Cell. Can we please understand that both of those deaths were squarely Goku's fault and both completely avoidable? And stop making excuses for Goku? Let's first look at the fight against Raditz. Had Goku stayed with his initial plan of holding on to Raditz's tail to let Piccolo shoot him with a special beam cannon, Goku would not have had to do the full Nelson and die in the process. That's Goku's fault. And you might say, oh, but Goku's a forgiving character. He wanted Raditz to have a second chance. You mean the man who just kidnapped his son and was physically abusive to his son? I don't know if any of you guys have kids, but even if you don't have kids, let's do a thought experiment here. You have a guy who literally just kidnapped one of your children is being physically abusive to them and is begging you for mercy. Are you going to show that guy mercy? No. Why? Because your parental instinct says, I must eliminate anything that's a threat to my son. Goku failed to do that, so I have no sympathy for Goku because he died against Raditz. And we're not going to wash over it by pretending that he did it purely to save Gohan. No. Goku died because he was acting an idiot and he got what was coming to him for his stupidity. Now the death against Cell. Now, there are so many reasons why Goku got what he deserved when he died against Cell, and why we cannot even pretend that this was Gohan's fault, or that Gohan bore the responsibility for this. For starters, Gohan was a child. If Goku didn't do what it took to instill that warrior's mentality inside of Gohan, or get to know him better, despite having a year of time with him in the hyperbolic time chamber, that's his fault. Because you gotta think about it. All Goku taught Gohan in the hyperbolic time chamber was how to go Super Saiyan and shoot a Kamehameha wave. Otherwise, we didn't see anything new out of Gohan. No new techniques, no character development. So all he was doing was just sparring with Gohan the entire time and didn't say, Hey son, I love you. Let's have a talk about life. How are you feeling? How are your grades? How's your life? No personal development whatsoever. Literally the same Gohan that walked into the time chamber walked out except that he's stronger and can do a Kamehameha, which means that Goku wasted precious time parenting. And don't give me this, but they needed to focus on training. Goku is a telepath. 
He could have spoken to Gohan telepathically to train. You remember when Goku was fighting Frieza and he telepathically orchestrated the Dragon Ball wishes with King Kai. So all of that is just a lame excuse. Goku wasted precious time he could have spent building his son's character. Instead, what does he do? He basically lets him become Simba from The Lion King, a pretentious dirtbag with power he doesn't know how to wield or deserve how to wield. And that's all Goku's fault for being a shoddy father. But it gets worse. When you think about the death of Goku against Cell, why was Cell able to become complete in the first place? Because Goku let the androids live. When Trunks came to him and said, hey, some androids are going to be killing in the future, you might want to do something about that, any normal father would use the dragon, would use Shinron, to wish for the location of Jiro's lab and go and either kill Jiro or destroy his lab and then arrest him or something or just eject him from the planet or even if Dr. Jiro's an evil guy, do the mafuba on him and seal him in a jar or something. There were so many ways that the coming of Cell in his perfect form could have been completely preventable. There was absolutely no reason whatsoever for Goku to die or for Cell to even become complete. And then to make matters worse, Goku gave Cell a sense of being. So Goku let Cell get complete by not destroying the androids. Let Cell have a sensu bean and sent a Gohan that he hadn't sculpted his character against Cell. Can you truly be surprised at that result? Goku was being a lousy father. And both of Goku's deaths are squarely his own fault. And you should not shift blame to Gohan. Oh, he died for Gohan. No, he died because he's a freaking idiot. So that is why I believe that almost all of the reasons that you think Goku's a good father, they actually work against him. He's actually a terrible father. He raised an impotent jerk. But here's the main reason why Goku's a terrible father. He failed to shield his son from Chi-Chi's influence. Chi-Chi was the mother of not a human, but a Saiyan. Goku's a Saiyan, Gohan's a Saiyan. Before you always have human. Yeah, name any other human that can transform, blow up solar systems, shoot lasers out of his hands, and get bulky. No. Gohan is a Saiyan. Gohan's Saiyan traits predominate over his human traits, hence why in Dragon Ball Super he was even able to participate in the ritual to make Goku a Super Saiyan Red. So here, here Chi-Chi is, a, Sa a mother of a Saiyan, and treating him like he's just a human, stifling his potential, stifling his possibilities, emasculating him to where he's looking like a skinny vegan in a tracksuit and can't even remember how to go Super Saiyan. Chi-Chi destroyed everything Gohan ever should have been. Now, sure, Guru and Elder Kai tried to help undo some of that. Piccolo tried to help undo some of that along the way. But the fact that Gohan lacks that warrior spirit is because he did not get a strong enough influence from Goku, and Chi-Chi basically ruined him. I'm just going to be honest, guys. If you want to, if you guys who think that Goku's a good father want to come to the table and agree with we who think that Goku's a terrible father, I think we can meet somewhere in the middle and say that it's not relevant how good a father Goku is entirely. Chi-Chi is a toxic mother and she should have stayed dead after Blue, after Blue turned her into an egg.